lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing well. How are you? I'm pretty good. Good. Yeah. Good, good. Getting ready for a big holiday weekend. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. Not, well, yeah. I'm I'm going to work. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, me too. But it will be a holiday weekend. So I, I do... Um, I do my company's payroll, which includes pay time off and all that stuff. Yeah. And so um, when I when I took over the well, I've been doing the payroll for a while, but now I actually like keep track of all the PTO and everything too, which I didn't used to do. Yeah. Um, I just plugged it in. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, like, uh, and the office manager did that, but he died in a car accident last year. Yeah. So um, I have now taken over that as well. Yeah. Now, I said from the very beginning there, like. Um, he used to uh, assume that on national holidays that everybody was taking the day off unless you told him otherwise. Yeah. And But, you know, you j- he just automatically assumed that you were using eight hours of PTO. Yeah. I was like, well, we have a, a 24, 365 kind of business. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not going to make any assumptions about when people are working or not. Right. <laughs> so if you're taking off a holiday... I need a PTO form. You need to know about it. (laughs) I'm just going to assume you're working otherwise, because I know I always do. I mean, pretty much. I mean, I I manage to uh, not work on Thanksgiving Day mostly and Christmas Day pretty much all the time. Um, But other than that, (laughs) yeah, yeah. I mean, I I put a little bit of time in at least on almost every holiday. So. And this weekend will be no different, right? And this weekend will be no different. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sure. Although I am working from home. Oh, that's that's nice. Yeah. 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 Um, and I, I will only work uh, to get whatever has to be done done. I'm not going to. No extra. Yeah. No extra work. You get no extra work out of me on Monday. <laughs> hey, there you um, go. But, that's uh, the spirit. Anyway, like, but I keep having to reiterate this. And then, so then somebody else was like, uh, well, I'll just... I'll just find out from everybody when whether they're working or not, and I'll give you a list. Because oh, yeah. apparently it was a lot of trouble to fill out a form. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, that's what's happening now. Fun stuff. Gotta love the corporate world, man. Yeah, it's a little weird. We're a small company, too. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, Filling out forms is tough, man. I, I thought, of, have you ever seen that uh, Key and Peele sketch where they're misunderstanding each other's texts? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Well... I look it up on YouTube when we're done here. But um, I, I had one of those moments earlier this week where uh, a guy that uh, works remotely, um, like from another state, um, had uh, sent me a message and said, hey, none of the PTO that I've used this year has shown up on my paycheck. Uh-oh. <laughs> and, I, and I said, oh, okay, well, when did you take off? And he sent me this list of yeah. dates. And I said, who have you been reporting this to? And he told me. Yeah. And I said, okay, well, cool. It hasn't you, made it to me, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I said, um, can you fill out this form? And then I gave him some instructions on how I wanted it done in terms of splitting uh, payroll periods and so forth. Yeah. And he sent me a message back. He's like, can't it just be plugged into my paycheck at this point? Like, it seems kind of silly to go back asking for permission now. Yeah. I was like, no, dude, I don't mean about the stuff that you've already done. I mean, in the future, <laughs> will oh, you yeah. use this thing? Right. Like, I already fixed your paycheck. That's not the problem. <laughs> the problem is that I want to make sure that I get notified so that you right. don't send, in six months, you don't send me another giant list of things that I have to go back and, and paycheck by paycheck fix. That's funny. <laughs> and he was oh. like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I misunderstood. I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I like I had a moment there where I was just like I almost got mad about it yeah. when I first got the response. Like, <laughs> and I took a breath and I was like, okay, no, no, this, he just he just misunderstood me and he's thinking I'm asking him to do a bunch of work for no apparent reason. And I get that. <laughs> like I would be annoyed about that too. It's no reason for me to get annoyed about him being annoyed about this thing that's not actually what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> just clarify and move on. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, which brings us to the social contract. No, I, uh, <laughs> although that is something that I want to talk about, but yeah. we probably don't need to start there. You don't want to start? Okay. Where well, do you want to start at? Well, what I mean, in the I, mood f- for? I figure that the big news is still this loan forgiveness thing. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so that's probably where okay. where we should start. Let's start there. All right. So start. Um, I don't know. What, <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you have to say about it, Mike? <laughs> okay. Um, well, okay. So we, we read that big post from my friend. Uh, my old friend from college after we recorded the show last week. You oh, yeah, I do remember that. You had yeah. me lost for a minute there. I was like, what? All right. <laughs> but yeah, I do remember that. Um, I sent him a message and was like, hey, man, I, I you know. I, I got a podcast with... for you. <laughs> no, that's not what I said. <laughs> um, although I did mention, like, I read your post after I posted the podcast. Uh, so maybe he listened to me, and that's why he didn't ever contact me again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Um, but I was like, you know, I agree with some of what you said and I disagree with the rest of it and I'd like to talk about it, but you know, if you don't want to talk about that, that's cool. I understand that. Just like to catch up anyway. So, yeah, you know, give me a call. No word. Yeah. Um, but, uh, so the part that I agreed with is he was like, look, everybody's doing the sky is falling thing and the sky isn't falling. Like this loan forgiveness is not going to crash the U S economy or whatever the Republicans are screaming. About. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I was like, you're right. That's yeah. absolutely true. Like, uh, in the grand scheme, this is frankly a drop in the bucket. Um, although not entirely. It's a, it's more than a drop, I guess. It's, but, yeah, it's it's a big drop, but... Yeah, um, but no, it's not... The God, it's they not, can withstand it. Yeah, it's not the make or break moment, right? Oh, yeah. Um, and the other thing he, he said uh, that I agreed with was... Hey, man, there's a whole lot worse things that they could be doing with your tax money. Like, I would rather this be going to loan forgiveness of a bunch of uh, uh, college students or former college students um, than go to buy another fleet of submarines or whatever. Yeah. Yep. I'm with you there, too. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, But then it got into this, like, well... You know, it just doesn't matter. And if the problem is fairness, then why don't why doesn't the president just um, allow every American to wipe uh, uh, ten thousand up to ten thousand dollars of some debt of theirs away? Yeah, like your mortgage, your car, your whatever you know, whatever you owe on, yeah. that'll make it fair. Um, and he is like, you know, and I think that education should just be free. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we have a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somewhere <laughs> along there, I kind of got off the train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, there are, there are, of course, just like general problems with giving the president the power to wipe away debt. I, well, I think that that's, uh, it's a big constitutional question. And I don't think it's really a question. Well, it's not even, it's not even like a question like, you're not really wiping it away anyway. Well, that's true too. But I mean, just the ability to, to quote unquote, to forgive, forgive debt. Yeah. 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 Um, the, the house of representatives has the power of the purse. Yeah. I mean, like, that's, yeah, that's their department. Now they've given up a whole lot of their jobs over the last many decades. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if we can necessarily hold them accountable to this or not, but, uh, but there is a danger with like the highest, office in the land being able to forgive any debt yeah and making that permissible under any circumstances frankly yeah um now okay so let's take trump as an example okay all right uh, just to, to you know if all the all the people that listen to our podcast that are on the left yeah. um both of them uh the <laughs> i assume there are more actually i yeah. hope there are more i'm sure there are. um but the what about if trump is reelected? Yeah. And he can forgive a debt. Yeah. Like, you don't think that there's some powerful person that's like millions of dollars in debt that he could just like wipe that away? Like, this is a weird precedent to set. Like, yeah. even even with the claim of, well, you know, COVID, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All right. So um, then, alternatively, there's the talk of, well, what about the PPP loans? Um, what about the... Um, the uh, bailouts uh, many years back, you know, decade back. Yeah. Um, you know, that was a, a forgiveness of debt. Well, yeah, it was. And here's the thing. I was against that too. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Like, I mean, legit. Like, I mean, I had the yeah. problem. I railed about that stuff at the time. Yeah. Like, I understand you, like, going and picking on Republicans and saying, well, you know, you're for the the... PPP loans and the forgiveness of that. Now that was part of the contract too, yeah. but so, which makes it a little bit different than the student loans. Um, yeah. You know, you were on board with the bank bailouts and the insurance 
bailouts and all that stuff, car company bailouts and yeah. what have you, to the too big to fail idea. Yeah. Um, you know. Oh man, my uh, still my I just talking about the car bailouts just made this pop in my head. But the cash for clunkers under Obama, man. I don't know why that one just like jumped in my head. Man, that one pissed me off. Anyway. Well, yeah, well that and that's actually a good example of like thing these kind of things going badly. We can come back to that. Um Yeah, later. Well, you know, yeah, we can or we can. It doesn't matter no, to I, me, but. I, we probably should cuz I think it's it's yeah. frankly a good example. Um but yeah, the the thing is that the two of us sitting here behind the mic as libertarians, we were opposed to all of those. Yeah. Yeah. And um and I, I am somewhat sympathetic to the argument that, well, you know, these kids didn't really understand what they were getting into. Um, you know, there was no real consideration about whether they would be able to pay the loan back when they were given the loan in the first place yeah. by anybody, it seems, <laughs> All right. um, and so forth. But I think that you're, you know, um, well, okay, so the phrase that I was looking for the other night that I couldn't come up with, I, I kept saying pitfall instead, but is moral hazard. Yeah. Like it creates a moral hazard. Um, and, uh, and we can come back to that concept too, but the, uh, the thing is like, we wouldn't have done all this in the first place. Like the problem that created the problem that we're dealing with now as libertarians, we didn't approve of that. Yeah. So, okay. So you have this big problem of, uh, of student debt. Um, and the, the government is forgiving, uh, you know, Hundreds of millions, a ton of it. Yeah. Hundreds of billions of dollars yeah. um, to uh, to wipe out some. I hope it's a significant portion of this debt at that number. I, but, yeah, but I'm um, afraid it's not. I don't think that it actually is. I, yeah. I, I remember seeing some numbers, but I forget what they were, and so I, I'm, it, I don't want. Yeah, but um, we were opposed to the government taking over the student loan system in the first place. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, and then with the PPP loans. Now, at least that was like, that was part of the agreement is that if you keep your staff, if you keep people employed, um, then we get to wipe out the, the loan in the future. Yeah. All right. So that sets it off as different. But we were opposed to the PPP loans as well. Absolutely. And again, you know, somewhat sympathetic to the idea of if the government shuts down your business... Maybe they owe you a little something for it. Yeah. Um, I get that too. But I, we were I, opposed to them shutting down the businesses as yeah, well. <laughs> exactly. Well, and that's that's kind of the point. And on top of that, it's still you've got the government came in and forced you to shut these businesses. Just like you're saying, we, mm -hmm. you, they shouldn't have been forced in that position to begin with. Right. But even when after the government does that, you're still charging everybody to help the people you choose to help. Right. Like it's still like a moral issue mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying does oh that, yeah does that make sense yeah like, absolutely it, yeah no yeah it's it's spreading the cost among everybody for um for a government mistake frankly yeah um and then of course the bailouts the original bailouts uh back in 2008 to 10 or whenever they were yeah um that was roughly the time period right yeah. uh you know we yeah we're opposed to that too like there's no such thing as too big to fail yeah um the problem is the corporate estate where the you know, they're, well, the all, reason that those businesses were so powerful is because of their close relationship with government in the first place. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, the this uh, idea of too big to fail makes sense for a government that um, has been courting these businesses for for power and vice versa. Like the other, yeah. the reverse is true as well. Um, but well, and, if they had allowed them to fail, then we would have had a whole bunch of new businesses move into those spaces. Well, and without government, those businesses wouldn't have became too big to fail. Right. And that's that's really the the thing that I think should be drove home, mm -hmm. is that these businesses, sure, it was going to hurt the economy if they had went under yeah. because they were so big. But goes back go back to the reason they're so big. Well, mm -hmm. the reason they're so big is because the government's been interfering in this market from the get-go. Right. So, I mean... You, at some point, you got to take the medicine, mm -hmm. and that's that's which, by the way, still hasn't happened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like by bailing them out, we just mm -hmm. kicked the can down the curve. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, and we'll see it again, and oh, we'll yeah. probably see bailouts again. Well, we will absolutely, we will. Um, as long as the government has money to bail them out, they'll continue mm -hmm. to do so. Yeah, and as long as we have a printing press that prints money, we'll have the money to 
bail them out. Yeah. Well, I'll just the, have to print three times as much because it's worth less. <laughs> um, which will in turn make it worth less. <laughs> exactly. It's this <laughs> it's vicious cycle, yeah. man. Oh, well, that's certainly, I mean, that's part of what will go on with this loan forgiveness as well. Exactly. Um, so we, we will see, this is inflationary, despite yes. what they're claiming. This is inflationary. Yeah. Um, it, it is one of those uh, issues uh, in um, economics, they call it uh, concentrated benefits and dispersed costs. Yeah. So um, the people that are benefiting from it are benefiting tremendously. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I don't even know the 10,000 is that huge well, a difference but i mean but it's it's significant to them well really the though point. this what this is at its heart is this is a bank bailout yes i suppose that's true but I, the the lender in the end is the u.s government which means it's the u.s in taxpayer. all of these i thought some of these were well actually, some of them are probably old enough that they were before because it was like 2010 i think that yeah. um that the obama administration took over student loan okay as a like a monopolistic government system yeah. Um, so yes, there are probably loans that are uh, that Still are old enough that banks. are held by others. But I don't know if they're eligible. Are they? I thought they were, but uh, they might be. But I, I I don't know though. Um, I mean, yeah. So th- it may be the case that that some of these are are bailing out banks as well. Yeah. Um, or at least giving them a leg up. I mean, they're benefiting from it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're collecting what they would have spent. Um, a fair bit of money and time trying to collect over time in the future. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that certainly saves them some money, if nothing else. Yeah. Um, but it, uh, it it is still inflationary, but it's the, oh, okay, concentrated benefits and dispersed costs. So it is significant to the people that are, that are getting this loan forgiveness. Yeah. Um, and to all the rest of us that are having to foot the bill, it's small... And it's not immediate. Yeah. Right? So it's hard to get people... I mean, although people are pretty worked up over this, but they're mostly worked up over the fairness aspect, not really like yeah. what it's going to cost them. Yeah. Um, because what it's going to cost them is going to be not very noticeable initially. Now, when you add it up over time, I imagine it, it'll be significant to them as well. Yeah. But they won't be able to peg it to this particular event, right? Yeah. So, um, but it will... It is money that's just being printed. Yeah, exactly. I, like the the government is spending money that it doesn't have, um, or it's not collecting money other that it otherwise would. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not generating revenue, um, and it's not going to not spend money because it didn't collect that revenue. Yeah. Right. So it'll continue to spend, and the only way that it can spend the money that it doesn't have um, is to either borrow it, print it, or tax it. Yeah. Those are the only three ways that government makes money. Yeah. Borrowing, printing, taxing. They yeah. don't produce anything. <laughs> exactly. So um, no matter which of those things, it's going to cost all of us. Uh, now, they're not going to tax it. Yeah. Um, so they're either going to borrow it or print it. Either way, it increases the, the government-held debt, um, and, uh, and that is, by its nature, inflationary. Yeah. Exactly. So it will drive drive uh, the value of the dollar down. Now, yeah. on top of that, it's not really helpful to students either. Yeah. Um, first off, the chances that this is a one-time thing, I think, are pretty slim. Yeah, well, the door's kind of been open now. So. Yeah. I hope it, well, it's being challenged in court, so we'll see. Well, maybe. But yeah, um, but yeah I agree. I, I think yeah. the door's kind of been open now. The chances of this being a one-time thing are pretty slim. And so... Uh, what is going to be the reaction to by um, colleges and universities? Well, they're going to go up on tuition, right? Immediately, <laughs> like, yeah. That's that's there's which, free money out there. It's just money yeah. on the table. Which is the reason college is so expensive now, anyway. Yeah, is, because of guaranteed federal student loans. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. The, the, this has been a huge driver of college tuition costs over the last um, decade plus. Uh, now, college prices were going up already um, because the government was already encouraging like more loans to go out for education, yeah. um, and then it just took over the system entirely. Yeah. But, um, but even before that, they were guaranteeing the loans, yeah. which meant that the, the people that were collecting were going to get paid yeah. no matter what. Yeah. 
Um, and what that meant was that the colleges and universities are now competing for all this extra subsidized money that's on the table. Yeah. And it drove prices up. Yeah. It also meant that more people were going to school, which that that's a, that's a demand issue, right? So yeah. demand went up, supply yeah. didn't change very much. Prices went up. Yeah. They have to. Right. Yeah. Um, now they're also competing for, um, they're competing for that money. So they're not, prices aren't going up because they're getting better educators. Yeah. Prices are going up because they're getting nicer amenities. Yeah. Those Cause that's how rooms. they're trying to draw people in yeah. and Olympic size swimming pools and, uh, recreation areas and whatever else. Absolutely. Right. Um, cause that's how they're drawing more students. Absolutely. And if you think that, um, that saying that, uh, okay, so the precedent that this could set also um, is that now students are saying, well, at least $10,000 probably of whatever loan I take is going to get handled. Yeah. And so the the pressure is to take as big a loan as you can. <laughs> yeah. Now. Yeah. Um, in the hopes that a portion of it gets forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or that you run out of time because I think that there's like time limits on some of these loans as well. So Is if, there? yeah, you, you can only pay X percentage of your income. Um, and then, uh, after a certain amount of time, uh, the rest of it's just forgiven. Really? Um, yeah. I haven't uh, heard that. I didn't know that. I, I think that that's the case for at least some of these loans. And I was reading an interesting article about, um, how law schools, what they were doing was, uh, they were taking advantage of this fact already um, by saying, uh, that they would, um, pay, uh, like a stipend to their students after they graduated when they were doing their first, you know, decade in private practice. Yeah. Um, it, well, no, was, I think it was as long as it was public, uh, a public position. Maybe that was the, uh, the deal. Like, yeah. so as long as you're working in the public sector, yeah. um, that, um, uh, that you would only pay X percentage of your income. And then after so many years working in the public sector, the rest of the loan was forgiven. So, um, so law schools were like offering stipends for, to their students after they graduated for the, for 10 years yeah. that were covering a portion of their pay, you know, of the loan that they were having to repay, yeah. um, to try and invite them to come to the school. And it, what it does is it creates this thing where, Hey, well, we all benefit, right? Okay. So yeah. if you come to this law school, yeah. um, and you can get a $200,000 loan, um, then we're just going to increase our tuition by $200,000. Yeah. All right. So it'll cost you two, you know, an extra $200,000 to finish law school here. But when you get out of law school and go to work in the public sector, um, we'll pay, we'll make your payments on your loan. Yeah. All right. And, uh, say you're making $150,000 a year and you can only pay 10% back for yeah. 10 years. So that's $15,000 a year. So, um, the school pays back. One hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars. The rest of the loan is forgiven. They got an extra fifty thousand dollars in their pocket, yeah. and the student got an extra hundred and fifty thousand dollars in his pocket, and got to go to that school. <laughs> what a scheme! Yeah, and <laughs> and um, the art the writer of the article was saying that like this is already happening. Yeah, yeah, and that it's just going to get worse. Yeah, we're just going to do this even more now. Yeah, yeah. Um. So. Uh, it'll drive up tuition prices even more, make it that much harder, require that m more loans. This is the this is the school bus and then all the uh, ambulance and the cop car sliding into the ice skin. Yep. Right. Like a, go a government created problem that government thinks it has the solution to and just keeps piling onto the problem. Yep. And um, you want to you want to just pay play this Kareem Jean Pierre clip now. We can. We're, we're going to play this whole thing all at once. I, I was hesitant to play it because, well, you'll see. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> so here we go. All right. Again, here's what we have done. Here's what here's a lot about how much it might cause, it might not cause. Who is paying for this? What we are saying is the the work that this administration has done, the work that the Democrats in Congress has done, is actually there. And you see that the 1.7 trillion uh, deficit in deficit uh, deduction that you see is is going to benefit us in being able to do something for the middle class, to do something just, for the middle class. But when you 
for this you. is about doing something for people who make less than one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. One point seven trillion dollars. That's what we've been able to do. But when you forgive debt, you're not just disappearing debt. So but, who is paying for but, this? And then I'll give you the second part. We lifted the pause, right? We're going to lift the pause uh, at the end of this year, which is going to matter, right? Which is going to offset uh, a lot of what, what we're doing as well. Uh, when you think about the, the $4 billion that are going, that's going to go back uh, into, as, as revenue, back into uh, this process of folks uh, paying, paying, right, their college tuition, that matters as well. So we are doing this in a smart way. We are doing this in a way that's going to be effective. Uh, we are doing in this a way that keeps to the president's promise on giving people who need some breathing room, who need some breathing room. I just, I just laid out, I just laid out for you. No, Peter, I just laid out for you how we're seeing this process and why is this matters. Again, I just laid out, I just, I just laid out because of the work that we have done in the economy, because of the American Rescue Plan, uh, because of uh, the Inflation Reduction Act. And because all of this work that this president has done is actually has brought down our deficit by $1.7 trillion, unlike what Republicans did when they added to our deficit $2 trillion and did not care at all or thought about how this was going to be paid for, they did not actually put in a process or thought th think about how we're going to do this in a smart way. Okay, so the reason I didn't want to play it is because it seems pointless <laughs> like she's just not good at this no um yeah this and is, so, this is and, the best they can find that's what kills yeah. me man like i mean this she is checks your, a lot of boxes this man. is your government at work man this is a diversity hire <laughs> yeah well the, that too yeah but like this is this is your government at work man like that's that that that's what you're putting your faith in right there <laughs> well uh, the obvious answer to the question peter Ducey's is asking is the taxpayer pays it. Yeah. No, but I guarantee you in that binder she's got, it mm -hmm. says, don't say taxpayer. You're right. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sure that you're right. Actually, all they would have to do is not say it in the binder. Because she's not going to say anything that's not in the binder. Right. <laughs> so, um, the, okay. Uh, let's start with the, the deficit reduction thing. You know, that we, yeah. the, oh, I also get a kick out of this, uh, woke language throughout the, we've done the work, we've done the work yeah. that just really stood out to me. I, I'm yeah. not sure why it did exactly, but like this administration <laughs> well, has kept, done the work. It, it kept, it kept being said. Yeah. <laughs> like that's the reason it stood out to you. Yeah, is the, yeah. It just reminds me of all the, all the, you know, the woke corporatism stuff where, yeah. you know, it's like, well, you know, you got to do the work. You got to, yeah. we've got to do the work. But I don't know. I'm just tired of hearing that phrase, I suppose. <laughs> right. um, but her $1.7 trillion deficit reduction. This is silly on a few levels. Um, first off, like that, I don't know where she got that number from. Yeah. As far as I can tell, it's not true anyway. Well, she got it from the binder. <laughs> well, right. <laughs> um, now, the, the 2020 U.S. deficit which is the difference between the amount of money the government spent and the amount of money that the government took in yeah. um, through taxes primarily, yeah. um, was $3.13 trillion, okay. which is was the biggest it had been in a long time, even though it's always obscene. Yeah. Um, uh, in 2019, that was up from 2019, where it was $2.77 trillion. So like the first year of COVID yeah. didn't really make that much of a difference in it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in 2022, uh, or what, this is like the 2021 year. Anyway, um, so far we have spent 0.66 trillion. Okay. Uh, or the deficit has been halfway through the year about 0.66 trillion. Yeah. Uh, which projected is 1.32. Okay. Um, so that's still only uh, 1.45 different. <laughs> like yeah. it's only a reduction of 1.45 trillion yeah. over the previous deficit. Now the chances that that's all they spend in the last half of the year, I think are pretty slim, yeah. but even so, um, this is still not money that they're making. Yeah. Like this is still spending in debt. This is, this is still debt spending. Absolutely. Um, and it, it's weird that she takes, you know, 
takes these numbers about like the difference between their administration and the previous administration. Um, when the previous administration was really in the heart of the, the pandemic, yeah. um, spending money and shutting down the economy, which, you know, big complaint about Trump right there is that he allowed that to happen. But, yeah. um, and then she goes into the American rescue plan. Like, all right, I think we've kind of, a lot of people have, but we've, we've kind of debunked the, the impact of the American rescue plan already. Yeah. Like things were already improving before they passed it. Um, it, you're talking about going from a situation where, uh, businesses were intentionally shut down to allowing businesses to open. Look and, what we did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so this economy is on fire, man. <laughs> um, anything that they, any claims they make about the inflation reduction act are, are ridiculous to start because first yeah. off it hasn't really happened yet. So you don't know what kind of benefit it's been. Yeah. Anything they say is just a projection and the projection is just to get it through, get it passed. Yeah. Like there's no truth in any of that. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, you know, of course we can continue to, to, uh, criticize the idea of, um, that we'll reduce inflation and debt by spending money. Yeah. Uh, whatever. So none of this has improved the economy. And if the Inflation Reduction Act does anything other than spur more inflation, I will be pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Um, uh, what else did she say in there? I mean, not much, I guess. Like, yeah. Well, it was a lot of evading the question. <laughs> yeah. Well, because the answer wasn't in her binder. Exactly. Right. <laughs> um, and... Uh, like going back to the like to the moral question about this um it 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 i guess it incentivizes no um well it does incentivize it but that's not the word that i'm looking for it it reinforces this mindset that debt doesn't matter yeah now your government's obviously living that way so it's hard to instill the opposite idea into people like yeah. individuals, like if my government can can function in a way that debt doesn't matter, why does debt matter to me? Yeah, you know, personal debt. Um, but it, it does. Seen a lot of studies say that um, have carrying a lot of personal debt has bad health side effects. Yeah. yeah. Well, it wouldn't surprise me. It's a stress, right? It's a stress. Yeah, yeah. and that's exactly what the um, I read something. It wasn't that long ago talking about just that. That mm. you know that. Um, it, and that's what it is. It's like people who carry a lot of debt have a lot of excess stress and stress is bad for you. Mm. So anyway, um, going back to that, uh, Obama, uh, Obama administration taking over the student loan business yeah. in 2010 at that time, student debt was about 800 billion. Um, yeah. now student debt is about 1.8 trillion. Whew. So it's more than doubled. It's gone yeah. up a trillion dollars in 12 years. Wow. <laughs> Just goes to show, man. And then, so then to address uh, my old friend's um, comment about uh, just making college education free. Yeah. To what level? Now, first off, that would exacerbate all of these problems, right? Um, just because something's free doesn't mean it doesn't cost anything. Well, if somebody's paying, okay, just like so these debts, somebody's I, paying. Th it just kind of occurred to me. So, okay, we want to make college free. What if we just made college like public school and you just go till, I mean, that uh, you have 16 grades now. Well, you, you pretty much do now. You pretty well do now. Yeah. But like you That's just, about the value of college at this point. Oh, it, it, yeah, it yeah. is. Um, it's, it's. I, I believe that, at least from my experience, has told yeah. me that. Yeah. I, mean, I went um, to college. And, yeah. you know, like, I, I've got a four-year degree. It took me, like, eight years to get it. But I, I got a four-year degree Yeah, um, that has done absolutely nothing for me. Uh, yeah. Like, all it has really done... I mean, it it granted me some perspective, I, I think. Like, I, there's a there's a way I approach problems and, and, you know, a paradigm of the world that was created through my studies yeah. um, to some degree. But it wouldn't matter what that was. Right. Yeah. Like no matter what I had done the, with that time, it would have done the same thing. Yeah, The life um, experiences would have done the same as the degree. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I think that it's valuable to me, like this perspective that I that I have gotten through this. But um, I would th I think that probably no matter what I would have done, the perspective would have been value valuable to me. Yeah. Um, 
And it is, it's now just a thing that you can put on your resume to show that you finished something. Yeah. And, and that's not very valuable. Like, and, and to me, if you're going to, I'm all for college. Um, but I think if you're going to go to college, you do need to have a plan. You need mm-hmm. to know what you're going to do. And if you're going to take on debt, you need to have a plan to pay that debt back with your degree. Well, like, I, there I, needs to be a return on investment. Yeah. You got to get a degree that can generate you some income. Yeah. Exactly. If you're going to take a debt. In fact, I, I would say that unless you're planning to uh, do something that actually requires some real specialized training, yeah, don't go to college. Yeah, I agree. Um, like if you want to be a doctor or, heaven forbid, an attorney or, um, you know, something, an engineer, you know, uh, like a, go into a field that requires like real specialized training that you need to learn in school. And actually, there's probably nothing that you need to learn in school, but school can be beneficial to help you learn yeah. like a lot of those things. Yeah. Um, then go to college. If you don't know what you want to do, don't go to college. Go work for a little while and then go to college if you figure something Once out. Once you decide. Or, yeah. um, and if it's something like if you if you're really just kind of lost, like go pick up a trade. Yeah. Like go work for somebody who will teach you how to do something real. Trades are good. And something that Robbie mentioned on the last part of the problem that I thought was actually really, I just never thought of it. Go do an internship somewhere. Yeah. I mean, sure, you're not getting paid, but you're not also. Actually, most internships, they still pay you they something. They still pay you something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, um, and at least, like, if, you, if you're into a real a big field or something, if they've got an internship, just go do that. You're going to get more experience than you're going to get in that college, and yeah. you're not going to be taking on the debt. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, to me, I, I thought that was brilliant. I was like, absolutely. Like, yeah. Especially, like, if you're wanting to do something like, like getting into acting or, like, something in the arts, mm-hmm. something like that, man, that internship would be the way to go. Yeah. You're going to well, get an, more an, experience there. Mm-hmm. Another thing he said, which I... I think is real important for people to understand um, is that like you don't even have to finish high school. If you go to a community college, if you go to a two year school and do really well, yeah, like that is a huge step towards finishing college. Man, that was a hack right there. I forgot he had talked about that was in the same little segment. He discussed that. Yeah. Now he said you got to get a 4.0. I don't, really well, agree it, with that but when he said 4.0 i think i was like yeah i thought i was like yeah if you want to absolutely solidify that this is going to work you mm. you want to you want that but i bet you still get in without that yeah chances are though if you've got any if you got any brains and you're like ready to to put any effort forth yeah like you can get a 4.0 at a two-year school oh yeah absolutely um and i think even if you didn't have that i think just like what you're saying i think you'd still get in yeah so. i i did um I did some classes at a community college uh, before I went to um, uh, business school. Yeah. And, and I didn't finish business school by the way, but um, I needed, there were some, a couple of like, there were a couple of economics and some accounting courses that I needed for business school that I didn't do in my, my anthropology degree for some reason. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And so I had to take them and I took them at a two year school and like, I really half-assed it. Yeah. Um, like essentially I showed up for class. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I made a 4.0 during that yeah, period. Like, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It was, it's, it's not difficult. And if you've got any kind of experience, like if you, if you have some real school experience going to a community college and I don't yeah. mean just real school, like if you've been to a four year school and then you go back to a community college. No, I mean like if you like Graduated paid any attention school. in high school, yeah. Yeah. Like you can do this pretty easily. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that there's some tough community colleges, but the point is to kind of get you going. Yeah. So they're not trying to limit their numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and also because of that, like you're probably above the curve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so uh, I, I think the, then the, like the question of free college though, like you have to create some limitations, right? Like, Free college, like forever. Well, if I just if I just take classes forever and ever, it's always free. Right. Like, um, do graduate programs are they still free? Like, if I'm going to law school or medical school or something like that, am I am I still not paying for college? Yeah. Um, you know, like, is, or is there some kind of requirement of how well I do? Yeah. In college, um, does it cover every degree? So if I go in there, I'm getting a philosophy degree or some other kind of useless degree. I mean, philosophy's 
philosophy is a self-perpetuating field. Yeah. Right. Like you get a degree in philosophy so that you can teach philosophy yeah. like that. That's which, by the way, I find philosophy super interesting. Yeah, me too. But it's not. Uh, yeah. Just like you said, it's a it, perpetuating it, thing. Like yeah, you don't you're not taking that to and doing much with it other than teaching it. Yeah. <laughs> now you can take it and go to a graduate program like you can take it and go to law school. Yeah. Um, or, or something. It's probably less useful in medical school. You should probably do some biology or something. But yeah. um. But like I can, you know, philosophy degree can be valuable going into uh, law school. Yeah. Like, you know, it teaches you to logically assess things and create arguments and so forth. But for the most part, philosophy is a self-perpetuating field. I'm not even trying, like, I'm not trying to pick on like, you know, feminist studies or like, but, you know, if you're getting a degree in, uh, you know, 19th century Russian literature or something like that, yeah. you know, should the taxpayer be paying for that? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, because again, nothing's free. Exactly. Like it costs somebody. And oh, so yeah. if the government's providing it, it's the taxpayer that's paying for it. Yep. Um, again, that creates another problem where now you've just given people a holding place for another four years, roughly, before they have to enter the workforce. Yeah. That's free. Yeah, All right. Right. I mean, not that they don't have living costs and what have you, although, you know, if you complain enough, you can probably get the government to pay for that, too. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just it, it's created a, 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 a some place to just go for four years. Yeah. Um, and be taken care of more or less yeah. like a welfare state for young people. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. That's not I mean, that, and that's not good for society. Like no. society doesn't benefit from that. And the whole idea, the whole reason that for years it's been preached, you got to go to school, you got to go to schools, because it's good for society, mm -hmm. is the idea is that, you know, well, people will be more educated and the better educated public we have, the better off we'll be. Yeah. But it, it's just not going to, when you start giving it away in that way, it's not going to create that outcome. Yeah. Well, I have some serious questions about whether most colleges education anymore anyway. Well, I, like, oh, there, I, there's a difference between school and education. Yeah, and you're not getting an education in college. Yeah. <laughs> you're getting I, indoctrinated. <laughs> man, I don't know if you started listening to the No Agenda that came out yesterday. I haven't. Or not. No. Um, but they play some of these man on the street videos yeah. that like make me not want to live on this planet anymore. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and it's, I know that you can pick and choose with man on the street oh, stuff, yeah. like obviously, but the idea that any adult... Yeah. In this country thinks that there's 24 letters in the alphabet or can't name what continent we're on. Yeah. Or I mean like that, that that's some that's some ignorance about some <laughs> real basic information. <laughs> right. That I I just can't believe like we how do you failed as a society. Yeah, how do you go to high school? Yeah. Like you have to at least go to high school. I know you don't have to graduate, but if you got yeah. to be 16 years old in school in this country yeah. in public education and you don't know how many letters there are in the alphabet or what continent you're on, yeah. like there's a real, pro you're not getting an education. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like these yeah. are, these are really basic pieces of information. And, um, I, I've also, you know, I, I've always been kind of an autodidact. I, I do think that there is more valuable and self-directed study anyway. Yeah. Like if you find something that you're interested in, read, you've got explore. It, yeah. yeah. You've got so much information available, available to you in this day and age. Yeah. Like the internet was just kind of coming into its own when I was in high school. Like it was still like news groups and bulletin yeah. board services and stuff when I was in high school. Um, you could find some information online, but it wasn't like it is today. It, yeah. You didn't have Google. And I remember that time, um, really pre Google mm -hmm. where like when you went to go search something, you had to know what you were looking like yeah. where you were going to go to go find that information. You couldn't mm -hmm. just find the website. Yeah. Um, different time. I mean, I was still like footnotes and in notes were book citations through yeah. the entire time that I was in school. Yeah. yeah. Like you didn't just post a link to a website that wasn't. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it didn't that, exist. That was just not a thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and so now there's a tremendous amount of information available to you. There's uh, so many um, uh, apps and services that allow you. Uh, a guy in my office um, promotes, 
I say promotes like he works for them or something. That's not the case. Just like um, a really valuable service called, I think it's Hoopla. Oh, yeah. Um, where you have online, it's an online library. Yeah. Um, and all you got to do is punch in your library card number yeah. and it gives you access to all of their audio books and so forth that are available through the, through the app. Oh, cool. Now, but what that means, and you can put in multiple library cards. Yeah. So what that means is that you, every time you travel anywhere, yeah. if you go to the public library and get a card, yeah. like you, you have can plug that in, you have access to everything that they've got on on audio. That's cool, right? So if you go to New York, you can go to the New York Public Library, the Chicago Library. Like you can go to like these big cities yeah. and get access to the public library information or the you know the selections available through their public library on your phone anywhere you are yeah yeah like that's, that's amazing that's, that's in, insane yeah um so there's there's so many tools available if you want to learn stuff yeah and i would say that it, unless you have like a specific plan that requires specialized education don't bother going to college like do something that'll earn you some money that'll teach you how to do something and whatever it is that you're kind of that you're interested in that probably won't earn you money. Yeah. You get online and you just start reading. Yeah. yeah. The not yeah, you don't need to go to a school to just to learn. Yeah. Like. Um and so you know, the idea of uh of the public paying for all of this, this kind of comes back around to hopefully to <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm going to make it. Yeah. Um come back around to the this social contract. Like I keep this is one of those things that comes up. And Do you, you remember look, when you signed your public contract? I don't remember it at all. <laughs> um, I, there's actually an article on the Liberty Mike website, if you go back far enough, um, that is, it's something like, what is the social contract theory thing anyway? Or yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> um, and it's, you know, it's not meant to be informative. It's it's meant to be interrogative. Like it's, it's just a, mostly a series of questions for people to consider when they're talking about the social contract. But this is one of those things that gets thrown back at me all the time when I talk about, uh, you know, taxation being theft or yeah. when I talk about, you know, various problems that I have with what the government's doing, this, that, or the other, or what, you know, it's like, well, you know, there's, but there's the social contract. Yeah. And so what, uh, there are. I'm not going to dismiss the idea of social contracts. There are real social contracts. I just don't think you have one with the government. I yeah. mean, but like when I go into a restaurant, like yeah. I don't sign a contract when I sit down that they're going to that after they bring me my food, I'm going to pay for it. Yeah. Right. Like it's just assumed. That yeah, we all know that that's going to happen. You know, <laughs> and, and <laughs> they're not doing pay before you pump it the <laughs> <laughs> at the restaurants, right? And exactly. And and um, you know, my expectation is that they bring me clean food. Yeah, exactly. You know, and and we don't have to sign a contract. That's just like a social expectation. I mean, a social yeah. contract is really more about mores, right? It's about yeah. an understanding between people about what's expected from two sides of an interaction. Yeah. That's what where your social contract is. Yeah. Um, your social contract is not with your government. And and for those who still who think that it is, um, like one of the biggest examples that I bring up, well, the first question is, well, is it then dependent on what nation you are born in? Yeah. Like, is my social contract if I was born in Saudi Arabia very different from what my social contract in the United States is? I mean, it would have to be if this is the way we're defining if, if things, right? If that's how we're doing it, yeah. So um, what about a woman born in Saudi Arabia? Yeah. Like, it's an oppressive culture for her. But yeah. she's just got to deal with it because of the social contract? She signed it. She shouldn't have been born there. Right. Um, you know, the idea that you can you can have some kind of tacit consent to this thing, like, if I can't withdraw, yeah. I mean, and of course what people say well, is, well, you can move. <laughs> you know, All right. um, but if, if I can't withdraw from it, well, what if, so this is the question that I've been asking people most recently, like in this presumed social contract that I have with the U S government somehow yeah. that I never signed and never agreed to, um, the results of this from theirs. So I, I pay money to them Yep. and, you know, provide services in various ways. Um, not so much anymore, but I did have to do the selective service thing. I could yeah. have been drafted. Um, you know, I, I may have to perform services to the U S government in the future. Uh, now what I get from them for my input is I am by almost every action that the U S government takes, 
I am made less safe, less secure, less prosperous, and less free. Yeah. Now, I'm pretty confident that any contract that I would have agreed to with a government would have guaranteed <laughs> me a, at least one of those would have, things. Would have sewed at least some <laughs> of that stuff up. Yeah. So you're kind of making the point that I was going to, what I was going to say, and that is if we, I, it would be a different scenario if the government was fulfilling its end of the bargain. Yeah. Even somewhat, like even like a little bit. But just like what you listed off, none of those things are sewed up. Right. Now, and what happens is if I don't keep up my end of the bargain. You go to a rape cage. Right. <laughs> That's not how I was going to say it, but <laughs> oh my God, you said the R word. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to put an explicit <laughs> We're gonna, yeah. tag on this now. Um, yeah, I, I go to jail Yeah. if exactly. I don't keep up my end. But yeah. there's no consequences to the government for not keeping up their end of the bargain. Which is the reason that they don't keep up their end. Because while I'm not a fan of government, and I am certainly not a fan of big government, mm -hmm. um, government could do good things. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, and I think if you, like we talk about a lot, is like your government needs to be local. And I think local government can do good things. Yeah. Um, because, because it's accountable to the people. Mm -hmm. um, what we have in this country is a government that's not accountable to anybody. Right. And that's why it's not a contract. Yeah. Because you can't have a contract where one party is beholden to it and the other one isn't. That's not, an, that's not a mutual agreement. Exactly. So, so there is no social contract. Yeah. Regardless of what Therefore. <laughs> yeah. Furthermore. Um, yeah, yeah. So... What do you even call an agreement where one party is beholden to the contract um, and the other party isn't? But one party, uh, there's consequences for not providing services, and the other party has no obligation to provide the services agreed to. I mean, we all know what it is. It's slavery. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's... I mean, I, I can't think of another, another word for that. It's certainly not... It's not, it's not a mutual agreement. No. Certainly not liberty. And yeah. <laughs> Um, so how do we fix this? <laughs> well, <laughs> I've got some thoughts. <laughs> all right, let's hear them. Well, uh, wow, I got all kinds of thoughts. One, why don't we all just stop paying taxes? Yeah, that would be nice. They can't, Actually, they can't lock us all up. That's true. They would uh, go for the low-hanging fruit. I think that you and I <laughs> are included in that, unfortunately. Yeah, we're probably part of that, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I just said it publicly, so... Yeah, uh, the problem is that you can never get enough people to go along with it. Even after you make this argument about the social contract, and, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, they're just afraid, and I get it. Well, uh, people start my my biggest the one that always gets me. People start hollering about the roads, man. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. I, uh, I Dude, if your tax we, dollars, we were do going not to have roads, time to talk yeah. about the roads well, on this were, podcast. If tax dollars were truly just going to roads, I would. I'd yeah. pay them happily. Yeah. But that's not where your money goes. It's going to blow up brown people halfway across the world. Yeah. At least a quarter of it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and the rest of it's going to uh, pay for uh, um, well-off kids to go to college. Yeah. yeah. There, you, <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, there's there's a reckoning coming at some point. And I, and I, and I mean an economic reckoning. Like there's, yeah. you can't just spend, spend, spend. And uh, not expect some kind of consequences because regardless of this um, this mindset that they're instilling in people that debts don't matter, debts do matter. Yeah. Um, somebody's going to call it in at some point. Well, and something I just kind of want people to think about. So um, Gorbachev passed away right. this week. Um, and so, of course, the TV has all been just praise Gorbachev and mm -hmm. and and. I, I think rightly so. Like I don't, I don't know a whole lot about the man. Yeah, but I mean, he did see the end of the Soviet Union. Yeah, and um, he uh, signed some very important nuclear agreements yeah. with the U.S. that have now fallen apart. Um, but um, but the point I kind of wanted to make is that so when the Soviet Union fell, it fell peacefully. Like mm -hmm. you, you didn't have. It, it it wasn't a civil war or anything like that. And I just want people to kind of bear in mind that that could happen here. Yeah. Like the United States could fall 
and it might not be the worst thing in the world because when anytime you utter those words to somebody, the United States falling, they immediately, oh, that'd be the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Would it? Especially well, if it happened peacefully. <laughs> the, the life expectancy of people in the former Soviet republics after the fall of communism dropped by like 10 years, though. Did it really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, so life was hard. Yeah. Afterwards, like transitioning to a, a market economy was not was easy. Tough. Yeah. Um, and okay. it, you know, there were a lot of, and, and there was a huge, uh, issue of, um, organized crime. Yeah. Uh, like the mafia was running the country for some time. Yeah. Um, after the fall of the Soviet Union. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there, there are still consequences. There wasn't a yeah. big internal civil war or anything like that. There wasn't like open fighting in the streets, Yeah, but, um, they didn't. They, they I would say that they didn't immediately crossed. become more free. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, there was yeah. chaos for some time. And then there, I don't know, it's it's hard to measure. Like, I, I obviously, I wasn't there. Uh, I just have read accounts and, and so forth. Um, yeah. But and, and one of my good friends in college actually was a, a Russian immigrant. Oh, okay. Um, and this was in the mid-90s. Yeah. So he was a he Russian immigrant. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Now, I will also say that I, I'm pretty sure that his dad was involved in the Russian mafia. <laughs> wow. So yeah. I think he had like a probably a better experience than most. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Interesting perspective to say. Yeah. Um, well, he never told us that. It's, it's, it, this is deduction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it wasn't, I mean, it, yeah, it was a peaceful transition transition more or less um but I, I don't know that it really benefited people for some time gotcha oh fair enough um, but they were like they didn't have i mean the what happened was that the 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 state owned everything and it was like given a well part of it was stolen by u.s advisors and yeah. you know so forth but um like the uh public publicly held means of production were kind of distributed to people and not evenly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it went to people that were influential and powerful already. And, um, so they, they got a leg up. Yeah. Well, but you talk about if something, some, the same type thing happened in this country. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you're talk all you're really talking about if the federal government dissolves is things going back to the States. Yeah, Probably. I mean that's that would be the the logical thing to do. And then obviously everyone would move to California. Yeah, oh yeah, because they're just that that would be the place to be, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I, I think I think it, realistically what happens is California starts building the wall to keep its people in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, because depending on what kind of government they set up, you might be right. Yeah. Um, that's certainly what the Soviet Union did. <laughs> I was fixing to say history would tell me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know. I I wouldn't I wouldn't particularly look forward to that. I mean, I would rather just see like well, a rolling never... back of um, a federal power. Yeah. Uh, or government power. Period. Um, but mostly involved in the markets. I, yeah. I do think that we would have an easier transition here because we are still mostly a market economy. Yeah. Um, there are plenty of, of small businesses, um, and there are, at least within the United States, there's plenty of agreements, be, like private agreements between private businesses that I think a lot would, would continue to, to work the way it does Yeah. Um, now economically. Yeah. Um, what you would get rid of is, a, in fact, you might see a boom in the economy here because we already have a market system that, yeah. that's just talking. restricted and over-regulated. Yeah. So you um, start peeling back some of that. Yeah. And, well, and what I'm proposing isn't exactly peeling back. It's back. It's ripping the Band-Aid off. Yeah. Um, so you may, you're right. You may see a boom from that. Mm -hmm. And there, there will, it, nothing will ever be perfect. And so even if you just flip the switch and dissolve the federal government today, it wouldn't be a perfect scenario. But, but I do think that there would be... I think that in the long term we would be better off. Well, Russia has been. Yeah. Well, and it's so it's funny about Gorbachev because so I watched some um I think it was France 24, one of the stations and they were doing some reporting on um the difference between the way 
Americans saw him in the way Russians did. Mm -hmm. Russians do not like Gorbachev. Yeah. They they really, I, I, and maybe for the reasons you laid out, like maybe mm -hmm. because things did get so bad after the fall of the Soviet Union. Probably a lot them. of people saw him as a traitor too. Yeah. Uh, I know that like, his policies of making um, military agreements and, and scaling back the nuclear weapons and so forth weren't real popular More at the popular, time. Yeah. And so a lot of that's probably. I mean, that's true over. in the U.S. though too. Yeah. I mean, well, like I, I mean, for uh, Reagan and and Bush um, took hits those, on that. Yeah. Really. As well. Yeah. Can't trust the Russians, you know. Oh yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Same stuff we're hearing right now. Yeah. Um. I I don't know. I like when when a rivalry is built, people are really intent on maintaining the rivalry. I think that yeah. that's a huge part of it. Like you create this whole us versus them. Um mindset yeah. a lot of mindsets in this in this episode i'm noticing but yeah. um you create a real like and that's valuable it gets people to rally around something yeah um but when you start talking about how the um the evil empire we're going to go make some agreements with them then people start to get upset yeah because yeah. remember reagan called the soviet union the evil empire oh yeah yeah and then he was making agreements with gorbachev yeah so, anyway. yeah, um, but I, I think, you know, unfortunately it hasn't lasted, but the, the most important agreements that Gorbachev made um, were those nuclear agreements. Yeah. And um, Bush the Younger and Trump um, and I guess Biden at this point, too, have all like well, kind of canceled agreements. So, And just mentioning Bush the Younger. Um, I watched the documentary on him the other day. Yeah, and I'm sorry. It's it's well, it's really amazing how much he screwed this country up. Like yeah. he really screwed us after 9/11. Yeah. Um, like in in so many ways, and mm -hmm. and the documentary kind of like so it was portraying him in a positive light, mm -hmm. talking about Bush, but um, and so it tried to dispel with some of that. Well, he was just kind of a tool of Cheney and that kind of thing. Um. And to really, he was the one calling the shots. So I was like, well, if that's really true, then the guy really did destroy this country. Like, yeah. I can hold him responsible and not just Cheney. Yeah. Um, but maybe Liz Cheney isn't so bad. <laughs> maybe not. <I> don't, <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> but um, it. But the kind of the point I wanted to make in reference to kind of what we're talking about is the world really did rally around this country after 9/11 mm -hmm. um, in a way that was was very powerful and. Bush kind of systematically destroyed that um, through actions he took as through his presidency. Yeah. Um, and and the documentary did kind of highlight some of that in that light, not completely, but it was it was there, and it's I, it's just a shame. Like there was there, we could have the world could have been a better place after nine eleven, and instead it became a more dangerous place. Due to the actions of the U.S., uh, it's stuff we're still dealing with today. Yeah, like that's just—it's crazy. Well, we'll go into that in more detail some other time. Yeah, my bad. I'm we're talking. running long. Yeah, I hear you. Um, especially after the. Uh, never mind. Anyway, um, so uh, we, we expect to be back next week. Uh, we're a day late this week. I called it off yesterday. It just. Um, I was having uh, I was having chest pains, and I, I wanted to put it off till today so that Gary could make sure I was still alive. <laughs> Always I am. good to check in on my boy. Yeah, <laughs> make I, sure, make I sure am. Y'all so all, right. all as well. Um, <laughs> okay. and, and barring you know something terrible <laughs> between now and next week, or you know maybe uh, it could just be that one of us just doesn't feel like it, or we can't get our schedules to match up, or whatever. Or who knows? Football but, starts next week. Well, football. That Sorry. better not interfere with the podcast. I'll be <laughs> so upset with you. It it won't. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. A lot of people out there. I'm excited about football. I'm ready. Yeah, I, college and pro. Like I'm ready. Bring on some football, man. I just don't keep up anymore. Oh man. Like I used to be a huge New Orleans Saints fan. Yeah. And uh, I don't think I've even watched a game in like three years. Really? Oh man. Yeah. I just I enjoy it. It's a good release. It's a good yeah. good. I have limited time. And um, that just it's just not a priority. I get it. Mm. it I have it, limited time as well, but I make it a point in my life to yeah. put aside time for things I enjoy. Football is one of them. 
I do things that I enjoy. I'm it not j- saying it just you didn't don't. make the cut. I, I get it. I get <laughs> it. Just it. didn't make the cut. Um, I understand. You're cut. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we'll, we expect to be back next week, though. Um, in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, uh, YouTube, uh, or and or and or and or Podbean. Um, the website's thelibertymike.com. You can always contact me at michael at thelibertymike.com. And is that all the thing? Oh, yeah, like and share and tell your friends and all those other things that can help us uh, spread this message around. And we will be back next week when we finally get this right. In the meantime, try to stay free. Life's short. Live free. Ciao. Later.